Hello and welcome to Nicholas Genetics Lessons and today's video is going to be about bioinformatics and I already made a video about um, how to build dot plots and uh, today I'm going to talk about interpretation of the results that you might get and uh, if you didn't see my previous video I highly recommend to see that video first but in this and also I'm going to explain what this pattern means when you see it on your dot plot and this is just very simple patterns that we may get and more complex would be patterns such like uh, here as you see uh, on the first glance it looks like this is very chaotic but after I will explain what each pattern here means you would be able easily read and understand such graphics and this wouldn't be any problem for you at all but uh, I would need to make few more videos to explain each pattern separately or uh, my video would be too long for you to watch so let's start with this graphic first and let me clean the space here so imagine that we have a square just like uh, we have, uh, for example, in when you build a Punnett square, the same square and the same uh, rule supplies. And for example, here we have a sequence of the, uh, say, DNA. So this is can be A, T, C, G, A, C, T. And uh, for example, uh, here also we plot the same sequence A, T, C, G, A, C, and T. So as you see, these two sequences are the same. So for example, here would be 5 prime end and 3 prime end here and 3 prime end here. So now we can make rows and columns so as you see principle would be the same as when we built a Punnett square but this time we just put dots whenever we have uh, the same letters in the same box. For example, here we have A and A here, so we put uh, dot here. And let's check the rest of the row. So we have A here, but also we have A here, so we put a dot here. Let's, let's uh, check the next row. We have T here and T here, so we can put dot here and we also have T here so next would be this row and we have C and C here but also we have C and C here next we have G here and this is the only one place where we have G here so next row we have a here and we have A here next row we have C here and C here and the last row we have T here and we also have T here and as you see we have a pattern so this is not uh, just a noise without any meaning we have a certain pattern here and that means uh, that we have incline uh, row and that means that uh, our two sequences are the same but also we would have some background noise here and in my previous video you saw a line that were uh, declined and actually this is doesn't matter it is the same today I put my two sequences in this 
fashion and this but if I would uh, put these two sequences that would be as follows for example would be in this direction and in this direction uh, we would have a decline decline line so this would go like this so if you using uh, software the first time it is highly recommend to put uh, one sequence and compare it with uh, itself so uh, you would see which uh, pattern of the software would be whether it would be uh, decline or incline but once again this is doesn't affect our um, results and our interpretation but you just have to know it in order to make things easier for you so let's now return to our previous picture and as you see here we compare two sequences this is can be two DNA sequences to RNA sequences or this could be two protein chains and as you see this pattern that uh, these two sequences are highly homologous and that uh, we plotting with uh, starting point here and of course we have some background noise that is normal even uh, when we had uh, our uh, small example here we had some noise also here but imagine that this picture is uh, about 100 residues or 200 residues by 200 residues and of course background noise would be present here in uh, large quantities but still you clearly see that these two um, sequences are highly homologous so let's now talk about what's going on here and once again let me clear the space imagine now we compare to protein chain and this is going to be the first one so it would be A, B, C and D residues and once again A, B, C and D residues and here also we would have uh, the same uh, chain that is A, B, C, D and A, B, C, D so uh, 20 amino acids goes under uh, short abbreviations and each letter means one amino acid now we build a square 8 by 8 so this is going to be 64 cells and now we need to make 8 vertical row uh, columns and 8 rows so few more left and now we make uh, rows so now we have 64 cells and let's once again plot the dots whenever we have in the cell coincidence of the letters so here we have a we can put a dot here and uh, here we have coincidence of B and also we have coincidence of A here and uh, B we have coincidence here C we have coincidence here and here next row we have coincidence of uh, D here and here and also we have coincidence of A here here and next row we have coincidence of B here and here and next row we have coincidence of uh, C 
here and here and coincidence of D here and here. So what the, this pattern show us? This shows that we have a repeat, two repeats of the sequence. So this is going to be repeat in the same direction. As you see, the sequence of these two polypeptides goes in the same direction and sequence are the same. And here we also have the same sequence and once again it is repeated. And as you see, now we have a highly organized pattern. We don't have noise, background noise here. And this is exactly what we see in this picture. So now you can interpret this picture and you can say that here we have uh, two sequences that is repeated. It uh, can be not twice, it can be more than twice. For example, picture might be something like this. And this is what we can see very often because uh, most of, uh, for example, DNA, uh, so-called junk DNA, and uh, we have about 98% of the DNA that is just uh, repeats. And such repeats can be of the different lengths. It can be just 5 or 10 residues, or it can be hundreds of residues. And why it is important for us to compare two sequences? First of all, we do it uh, in order to find uh, similarity and uh, homology. And we need it because, uh, for example, if we study human genetics, we cannot uh, make uh, experiments on human beings. For example, uh, delete one gene and see how this would affect uh, the health, but we can do such experiments with mice, for example, and we have um, genes, most of the genes with higher degree of homology with mice, and if we do such experiments in mice, and uh, we would uh, cancel the gene, and uh, protein wouldn't be produced, and we would see how this affect the health of the mice, we also can find uh, homologous gene in humans and uh, we also can say that uh, if these two genes have high homology for example 85 uh, percent then we can say that uh, probably these two genes make the same protein and three-dimensional structure same active sites and they perform the same functions in the organism and as you see uh, uh, plotting the dots is uh, seems like very uh, primitive technique, but it is very powerful because uh, we can see the pattern when we compare two genes or two protein sequences or RNA sequences, and we can see if they are homologous or we have repetitions uh, that goes in the same direction. And of course, we wouldn't be able to do it manually, but with the use of computer, it is relatively easy to find homology and repetitions. And I would make uh, probably five or six more videos to show you different patterns. And then we would analyze the complex picture. And uh, then you would be able to uh, interpret uh, any uh, picture, any patterns and such uh, complex uh, pictures like this one uh, would be like an open book for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.